Hello, I'm Zara Ganaz, and welcome to my studio. Good evening. Right, we shall do more of this pussy cat. <laughs> yeah, the type of pussy cat you do not want to say. Um, right. Yeah, there is his ears. And everything else. Let's do the everything else bit. Yeah, lighting. Let's um, guess with the lighting a little bit. My reference picture is lit in a different way to the way I want to light this actual image. So I have to guess somewhat slightly. So one way in which you use reference pictures is to sort of look at how things would look. So I might, for example, as a reference picture, have lots of animals which are lit from different directions, or lots of cats, just so that I can see how the face interacts with light on one side or the other side, for example. Uh, in this particular case, I'm using a single reference, um, and it's lit sort of that way and I want to sort of light it sort of slightly that way more face on kind of like a torch beam so I have to um, work within that constraint down a little bit just to help with the colouring around here by turning it down I can reduce the um, how quickly the wood changes colour which makes it a little bit easy a little bit easier to control
Yeah, it's just kind of dark, kind of dark. Yeah, and I think I should be careful of this point here is the fact that uh, fur direction. Just kind of what towards the nose. So just kind of doing this in sort of stages, so uh, trying to create a smooth gradient. Um, smoothish gradient, if I can. Kind of like I've done on that side there. Round its ears, top of there is quite dark. Okay. Hello, good evening, Wolfie. How are you today? You're really good. You trolled a streamer yesterday. Okay, what did you do? Come on, what did you do? Poor streamer. <laughs> I see.
Well, I certainly couldn't tell him. <laughs> oh, he doesn't stand a chance. Not enough information. <laughs> yeah, of course he does. It kind of makes it even funnier if you start dropping obscure hints that are so obscure that only you know that they're hints and the person at the other end can't tell what the hint's about. <laughs> yeah, you're just getting your own back, aren't you? Because I, I, I did that sort of thing to you with uh, with that card, and I still haven't told you what's uh, where the mistake is. Now the odd mistake on here, like I'm getting darker spots for some reason, I do not really understand. Well I do, it's just the wood that's being um, contrary. But um, this being a leopard, I can always put a spot over the top of my mistakes on here. Oh, I don't know what kind of hint it would be. I mean, that's the whole point, isn't it? That they're hints that you know, you know, and nobody else actually sort of can understand which way they work. Um, I can't actually think of one. I mean, it's uh, completely. Um, I'm completely making something up, okay? Um, but I might do, for example, I might do something like um, mention that I have to I have to go down to the shop and get some nail varnish, and then a couple of minutes later and say nail varnish is really good on on um, uh, for for things like coils of wire to stop them uh, getting scratched and stuff like that to totally confuse the issue. And, for example, <clears throat> I quite like sewing. I can also knit and crochet. <clears throat> and I have a sewing machine. It's just that over there. <laughs> so...
What you have to do, I guess, is use the gender stereotypes and then confuse the issue. Do I approve your charm? Um, you don't need my approval. It's it's on the it's it, it's it's on it's on the side of joking. Uh, it, it's not it's not it's not it's not a sort of malicious thing. So from that point of view, yes, uh, you know, and it's it's your privacy, you know, so. From that point of view, you know, and again, from that point of view, you know, it's it doesn't hurt anybody. It just um, confuses them, makes them intensely curious, but it doesn't uh, doesn't actually hurt anybody. So yeah, <clears throat> don't see why. <laughs> well, I never particularly approve of lying full stop, you know. It's there are ways of saying things though where you cause people to assume something completely different or they hear something different from what you say. So I never never particularly well, I don't really approve of lying full stop, but you can say things like um Oh, I'm trying to think of something now. Um, it's what's called being economical with the truth, but um, I'm trying to think of an example, um, which I can't immediately. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> At one time I could reel these sorts of things off and I can't actually think of one right now. But you, you, you say two completely se two se two sentences which aren't related to each other, um, but people think that they are. Uh, by by various means, I don't know. Let's say um, I bought a new telephone. Um, I must remember to charge my telephone. Now, that is a poor example, but that that most people would think that you you are going to charge the telephone you just bought. But in, in uh, it's a perfectly true statement I've just made. But I bought my phone about three years ago, or four years ago, and yes, I have to charge it. The two statements are perfectly true; they're just not related to one another. But most people would think they are. <laughs> It's too good. <laughs> All right. It's um, I mean, it's a, it, it's it's the same sort of thing that magicians do, but they do it. It's misdirection, you know. Yeah, the nail polish is a misdirection. Um.
I'm not particularly, but for some reason I can do that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, I, c I can't do it at this instant in time for some reason, but I... Um, I mean, I've written, I've, I've written a lot. I was going to say, I've written a lot of books. I've written a lot of manuals, um, and wording is kind of, uh, sort of quite important, I guess. And uh, I, I, I am quite sensitive to statements like that. I call them politician statements because they say something without actually saying anything, uh, which is half or nearly what I've just done. But they. Um, you, know, you, you get two or three things that are completely unrelated to each other, and uh, you know you might think that that's not what I said, but I'm not about to correct you. Yeah. Hello, Eddie Fall Guy. Good evening. Yeah, I like stitching. Well, I guess I'm kind of the same, but you can see. Um, yeah. The sewing and the knitting and the crochet and the cross stitch and the needle point. And the glass blowing. <laughs> so you, you just kind of, uh, in, in my case, I just um, kind of list off the hobbies. Um, and then add the, you know, one like, I don't know, NASCAR racing at the end of it or something. Hmm. <laughs> How are you doing, Eddie? How's the game coming along? Wolfie there, he's just... Um, Playing a trick on a on a, a streamer. Who is trying to discover their gender? Okay, Wolfen. Broadcast you chain mail any anymore because just about every time I've seen you uh, seen you go live, it's uh, messages. It's been um, game development. If it isn't obvious, this is going to be a leopard, but I'm just doing sort of the hunt. <laughs> Did I look like I'm giving him hair? Um, oh, a haircut. Uh, it's, uh, I'm doing some of the underlying shading first. Oh, I'm attempting to.
That must mean you're going to stream twice in one day. I don't quite achieve seven two hour streams a week, but uh, it's close. Um, when you buy the Arena streams. Okay. Um, I hope you had a good Christmas, by the way. I guess I should say Happy New Year, we're still close enough. <laughs> you see, to me, it wouldn't bo it, it wouldn't bother me in the slightest. You've tried already tried that sort of trick on me, and you know it, it, I don't bite, so. <laughs> Okay, that's starting to push that head backwards a little bit, which is what I'm after. It obviously wants to be a little bit so deeper though, does the darkness. You know, I was just about to say I'd love to get this finish of the weekend and start some carving. I'm not going to get this finish of the weekend. <laughs> I'm forgetting it's Friday today. Why have been doing that all day? But he can't. Yeah, I know there's some people like. There are some things that get me, um, but streaming isn't one of you know streaming and, and chatting isn't one of the puzzles uh, that I'm trying to solve for myself. Um, like programming puzzles and things, them I, them get me. Them I can work on those for hours, and I'll try all sorts of ways to to resolve it and things. And I'm extremely patient at doing it. Um, but streaming thing, yeah. You know, if you did that to me, I'd just go, nah, eh, whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I um, d you may recall, Eddie. I work from home, and I, I literally work from an office, which is eight feet that way. So, and I come through this. It's the house is that way. The office is that way. So I come through this room every day and I'm in here every evening. 
and I'm literally just about six to eight feet away from my work so um, I kind of there is no difference because um, they deserve us here all the week and at the weekend so I literally have to sometimes have to go um, ask the digital assistant what day is it um, but yeah I, um, I lose lose track of it quite easily I think yesterday I thought it was Wednesday um, so I was kind of surprised and then it, it, literally even tonight I, I I put my computer my works computer to sleep rather than shutting it down which I normally do on a Friday because I've got it with Saturday tomorrow so it'll stay asleep now for the weekend but um, I've actually just been out tonight and taken some of the uh, Christmas lights down from outside. And uh, one of the things I was about to, to do, I think, I think I thought, because it's dark out, I was going, I'll put the lights on. Then I can just disconnect them to take them off and I can get a little bit of light to see what I'm doing. Kind of glad I didn't because I was just busy taking, taking them apart. I came up with the end of a cable with no plug on the end and another end of cable with a plug on the end and uh, mm, <laughs> I am glad <laughs> I'm glad they didn't switch those on um, for the life of me it looks like somebody's taken a pair of um, wire strippers and, and started to strip the wire uh, and, and snapped it through but it's kind of like there's no, nobody in the garden and uh, it must have been done by an animal but it's um, I was about to say it's chewed all the way around the cable so it literally looks like you've taken it you know used a pair of wire strippers and there's a piece of cable on there's a smaller gap and then the rest of the, and it kind of you know it, it's gone all the way around because i'm assuming it's got to be a mouse that's done it but in the same place on on because it's a twin cable so in the same place on two cables in a few few different in about three different places and one time they've just gone straight through the copper as well so I'm kind of glad I didn't switch them on. There would have either been a loud bang uh, and don't know quite what. I'd have blown the fuse or I'd have blown the, um, the, the power coupler for the string of lights which would also have been a, not a good thing. I thought I'd have tripped out the mains fuses. At least um, it would only have tripped one set. I wanted to put the whole house out which was good. Your cat likes chewing cables. Yeah. We've been lucky. We uh, A long, long time ago, one of the first set of kittens, I don't know if it was Mindy or Maui, uh, one of them chewed through the Christmas tree light cable. Uh, and back then, as you know, there were mains, there were lights, uh, you know, actual bulbs, and it was mains. So had they been on, uh, it would have been one somewhat deceased kitten uh, because literally you just turn them on nothing happened and uh, yeah, two ends of the cable again but we've been kind of lucky most of the other cats haven't bothered chewing cables which is kind of a, a good thing really have you tried any of that pepper spray stuff Oh yeah, some some uh, some game companies have some absolutely fantastic um, uh, game music. Some some uh, some of my some of the music I'm most amazed at is it's things like the, the Cyan Games. Um, in at least one of their games, they've got places where the music is actually vox humana. Sounds like human singing. Um, although I believe it's an instrument and um, that music is absolutely fantastic
Uh, there must be something about the life cables that are uh, attracting him. Must must be able to I don't know, detect the current, perhaps. What was there? Was there was a reason why we were looking at the sort of the, the pepper sprays. Um, relatively recently. I think we were probably trying to discourage the cats from doing something. It's quite funny, we went into the, uh, went into the, the pet shop. And there's a guy there that knows a fair bit about stuff and talking to him about it. And he was, you know, you want to try some of this stuff. And uh, it takes the lid off an aerosol, sprays a little bit into the aerosol can. And you have a sniff of that, it's a nice pleasant lemon smell. You dip your finger in and lick it. At which point, I guess what was going to happen. Um, so, uh, <laughs> that's nice, nice lemony flavour. And he goes, and I just stare at him. Now, at which point, it's an unpleasant taste in my mouth, but I'm forewarned. So I'm just, it's unpleasant. It's not bad, but it's unpleasant. Uh, and and uh, he's just looking at me, and I'm going, something's supposed to happen. <laughs> that, was quite, that was quite funny, because... Um, Obviously, he's done that before, and and the normal reaction of people, you know, after a few seconds, he's going, yeah, sort of thing. But yeah, because I was for that, I, I kind of guessed that I was for one. So that was funny. Okay, Wolfie. Um. I mean, given that I will peel and eat a lemon occasionally, um, it's uh, it wasn't too bad. I've only just thought of it, but then what I should have what I should have said at that point was, well, that's probably one I shouldn't buy then because it doesn't seem, it seem to be very good. darken this down a little bit. Uh, I don't really want to turn the heat up. I almost fooled the camera then. It's doing a white balance adjustment. Let me just turn the white balance off on this. Or rather the automatic white balance off. That picture isn't actually bad. I'm going to uh, stop there. I'm going to turn off the auto white balance because I think it's um, adjusting the picture. Configure. Advanced. Oh, it's not. Yeah, for some reasons. There we go. See how that goes. Uh, for some reason, this uh, this camera does not. I don't know. It just doesn't seem to. Um, doesn't seem to like these lights too much, it, except for very specific. Usually, you have to to sort of over overexpose the picture to stop it um, doing interfer interference with the. Uh, with a 50 hertz on the lights. 
You're getting a slightly better view of it now. Yeah. Let's exaggerate things a little bit. So have you done any airbrushing uh, lately, uh, Eddie? I've got some, uh, some nice terracotta jugs and vases already primed to do some uh, to do some airbrushing on. When I can decide what I can <laughs> what I can do on them, probably something uh, typically Greek, but I've not thought of anything just yet. Of course, I may paint them by hand, but yeah, I was kind of like that. I can do it on stream now, though, because uh, with the with having a lot more um, room in the studio, I can now put um, an air filtration unit just behind this easel, uh, and still have plenty of room on the desk. So I've done. Uh, Done some of the things I wasn't able to do before, like the like the airbrushing. I mean, I primed all those on uh, on stream. Great, kind of great fun in a way to sort of just pull the trigger and actually pull the trigger all the way uh, and just blast paint out. You don't often get an opportunity to do that when you're airbrushing. I even had I even had the big touch-up gun out as well to do it, but that just sent. Um, overspray all over the room so went back to an airbrush at that point you're so happy why are you so happy Wolfie I mean, you've just restarted your PC so I mean, you do know you might have to get you might have to get a new PC at some point shortly. League of Legends made a new application. Well, there's a new um, a new game, I think. Oh. Come on, you know I don't play League of Legend. You know I don't play anything like that. Oh, screensaver. Oh, okay. I don't use them. I mean, technically, screensavers these days are completely redundant. Yeah. I mean, all, all the screen server is these days is a power, is a waste of power. <laughs> I mean, at one time they had they had practical they had a practical origins, but these days they just um, still letting your uh, screen power down, save power, and uh, and electronics and all that sort of stuff. They keep your screen active, wasting power. <laughs> it's quite funny in a way. Backgrounds though, yeah, no, I can understand those. I don't use them. It's the same. I, I never ever use the background. I can't. I just cannot be bothered. I mean, there's some beautiful pictures. Uh, this particular computer that's over here, um, with Windows, as you might know, the the initial screen before you log in sort of can be set on a just download something from Microsoft, and there's some absolutely amazing pictures. Now, the one that was on the screen tonight was uh, Lake Michigan in the States, frozen. 
Um, must, there, must, there must be a court on it or something. There was in the distance a lighthouse and things, but absolutely wonderful, amazing images. Yep. <laughs> you can send that image to the other streamer as well. I don't put anything on the desktop at all. Oh, well, there is some things on the desktop, but I really don't use it like that. I know some people do, they put hundreds of icons on and. Uh, um, what I what I find for me is when I, if I get that many on, I can't find anything on it anyway. It's not like you can scroll through them or or um, you know use uh, uh, letters to you know start letters to find things and things, which you can on the you know on the the start menu. So I just don't bother using it. Mm, yeah, sure. I say everybody's different. I'm sure. I'm sure you are able to do that, especially once you get used to them. I mean, that's. I suppose one of the reasons I doubt. I wonder the potential reasons I doubt is if I. Sunday with work, for example. Um, I'm using three screens. Uh, two 23-inch monitors and then the laptop screen, and if I go from there, possible. So I take the laptop out. Everything suddenly crams down onto the laptop screen, uh, and then if I go work in another office where I use one of their monitors, I've got I've got one monitor which may be a, a six by four monitor instead of you know whatever they are sixteen by nine um, with a laptop, and that rearranges the icons, and then I come back here and put them back on the three, and that rearranges the icons again. So they're, they're all over the place. I can never find anything. Even uh, even the home machine because if I if I turn on the um, iVision, you know, you know with the is it Nvidia AMD, whichever one it is, which you know banks all puts all three monitors into a, uh, to act as a single monitor, which I do for the uh, truck simulators, then that rearranges all the icons as well. So. You copied them, then uh, deleted uh, only about sixteen thousand items. <laughs> you know what you ought to do is uh, let your other streamer take a look at that uh, background. It might confuse them even more. I'll tell you what I do like, and that is, um, especially if you find another one which is sort of. Uh, I don't know, it might be sort of a uh, cutaway of a jet engine or I don't know, something like that, you know, or an F1 racing engine. Um, and uh, uh, so to say, this is my next one. <laughs> um, I was going to say, but yeah. I do tend to like vivid colours, so I mean that, I, I kind of like that background just you know just because the colouring, the vivid colours. I like um, I, I tend to like saturated colours. On screen, that really doesn't look as dark as it does here. Hmm. So let's bring that dark down to about there.
And this particular cat has a crease down his head. Ah, that can be seen on the monitor, that's good. Oh dear, the Edgy He's coughing again. Right, um, bum 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 bum. Yeah, so we've still got a dark area here. Now that's dark because of the way the fur is. This is dark because, of course, it's sort of vertical. So this is kind of the bridge of the nose. I'm not a member of, uh, I don't have a ready to count, so unfortunately I can't. Thank you for the host, Wolfie. <laughs> okay, I can't remember who used to do that. Um, uh, used used to host me because if they hosted me, they could watch the stream. If they if they tried watching it directly, sorry, yeah, they, they couldn't watch my stream. So if they hosted my stream, they could watch their own stream and then see mine. That was weird. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not a um, don't have a ready to count, so it won't let me. And I don't particularly have any desire to um, to get one. Uh yes, you're right. It was and um, three 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 D guy, three D guy. I think it was, wasn't it, or something like that. Three D, three D something. I haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah, well, uh, I think so. That may, might be a solution for you then, uh, Wolfie. Host it and um, and then watch your own stream. I mean, I don't actually underst understand particularly why that should um, should be any better. Because in theory, they're getting the image, they're getting the stream from exactly the same source, except that then they're rebroadcasting it, so. Unless there was some sort of sneaky transcode going on, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, haven't seen him for a while. Um, mind you, there again, I, you know, and I used, used to mod quite a bit for for Lost, and I haven't uh, haven't been in her stream for a long time. is to enjoy watching those uh, those streams. <laughs> mm. 
In some ways, I kind of feel like uh, the creative has lost. It used to have more of a, almost more of a, like a family type of feel to it. I mean, there was a lot. There wasn't as many streamers on, I guess, and you you won't say you knew them all because you didn't by any means, but you kind of felt like you knew a lot of them. And we always used to keep, you know, popping into each other's streams and things. And uh, it was, that kind of it's gone a, by the by now, and it's sort of changed a bit. Hmm. Sorry. The musical phrase that you've just heard there, which is from Might of the Warlords by Zircon. That musical phrase sounded just like um, a, the, a phrase from one of the science fiction theme tunes for um, Blake Seven. Just the start of it there just sounded like one, you know that they made the start of the main theme, and uh, it just made me look to make sure it wasn't that one that was about to play. Yeah, you, you could be right. I guess um, it just tends to be. I don't. Know. Yeah, as you say, there's more people on, so I guess it gets more localized now. And I, I kind of do so many different things that um, I probably don't see it happen as often. And I must admit, there's so many streams out there now that um, I'm kind of a bit more, and kind, I'm kind of a bit more picky about what I watch because um, I think a lot of them are kind of. There's always a there's always a lot of drawing streams on, um, which all seem to be sort of similar. So I know I, 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 I know I tend I tend to sort of keep scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. It's probably when I'm on as well as uh, uh, when I go looking. That is, um, a lot of a lot of the stuff that I like to watch just isn't on at the times when I uh, when I get chance to have a look. There are times when I wish pyrography went faster. I can make it go faster by turning the heat up, but I know if I do that, I'll just make me. Well, I won't necessarily make mistakes, but what I will, what will happen is I will get. Um, uh, inadvertent heat application of heat. Uh, okay, um, I haven't really, I guess because I'm broadcasting at that time, I mean a uh, year or so ago when I was the first broadcasting I used to start at 8 and finish at 10 for a couple of hours, 
Uh, and I guess I, I never saw that, be and even now, of course, I start Seven Nation finish at nine. I, I also tend not to see it because um, I'm broadcasting. To think of it, you probably are right because occasionally when I when I finish at nine o'clock, I sometimes will have a scan through channels, depending on what I've got to do. And uh, yeah, there always does seem to be a fair number on. It just, well, <laughs> what I was about to say is it, it seems harder to discover the good ones these days. Because, but that's there's just there's so much choice and good is relative. Everybody thinks different things for about different people, so. It's a really... It's a really relative statement. I'm going to put some colour around the eyes, but um, I want it to be, a, a, again, a fairly light colour. I need to make sure the contrast elsewhere is uh, quite strong. Yeah, then all I need to just do is a I'm doing this using a U motion because then if I get any sort of slight streaking um, it will be in the fur direction and therefore will sort of look and blend in quite naturally. Now, it might not look like it, but I am actually picking this pen up at the end of each stroke and putting it down again. That's so I can avoid the blob on the end. Now that shading is starting to look a heck of a lot better. I've got that ear to do. Actually, I've still got that ear to do, but... Time for some tea.
Finish it off before it goes completely cold. Right. Let's do this cheek. Mirror this one somewhat, I think. Naturally, I kind of want to fade from that up into whatever the colour is here, but that would be a mistake in this particular case because what's the way this the fur is likely to be is that's likely to be overlaid on top. So. And you sort of look like that, my, my sort of fingers are um, quite brightly lit, but then the shading underneath here is extremely dark and uh, the, you've got a fairly defined edge. It's sort of not really faded, there's a, there's a minor fade um, when you look at it just because of the curve. But uh, So I want to do something like that along there. Okay. This is this your other the other streamer uh, Wolfie, or is this something else? Okay, well, that, that's one of the dangers of um, text conversations. There's no, um, there's no cues that um, normally help people understand when something is a joke or not. It's really hard to sort of make amusing comments um, in text. Let's just darken this down a little bit. Actually what I need to do, and I noticed it last night, is I, I need to make this area here, the black of the, the mouse, sort of really continue right through um, past the corner of the mouse. Because I kind of stopped it short. It sort of looks like he had a light in the corner of his mouth. 
and this one although you know it's probably accurate it just didn't look right it will be dark down there so darken that off and the same on that side although I've already done that that's probably actually a bit bright as well but I'm going to leave the, the fact that that's a bit bright until a little bit later Shadow hides detail. And sometimes shadow is the detail, so things like you can't actually see it, but there's a fine white line there for no apparent reason. Probably because in um, in marking it, I've ended up with uh, just slightly disrupting the wood surface, and therefore it, it just shows up slightly differently. <laughs> that that in itself can be a joke. If you're always joking and then you don't, it doesn't have mess up people who expect you to be joking. And when you're not, they can't work it out. Um, so that face is starting to look quite good. So what we need to do, we we'll probably turn this down a little bit so that I don't actually get blobs. Well, let's hope your next game goes a lot better. Now it's a first pass here just to knock the white off. Um, it kind of irons the wood flat as well, which changes its uh, look slightly. But I am doing it slowly enough to actually apply a little tiny bit of well, it's effectively a yellowish sort of um, colour. Very, very, very pale yellow. So sort of the hint, a hint of yellow. Spirography doesn't, isn't all just black. In fact, it really is. It really is black even when you're trying to get it. You need to use them quite often. High heat. And often put up with carbonisation rather than uh, uh, the proper pyrography look. Um, but it's it's kind of amazing the range of actual colours you get. Sort of, um, you can almost get a dirty grey at times, all the way through to sort of yellows, which is what this kind of looks like. Then an orange and a brown. For you again get a sort of a dirtier colour um, and then it starts to actually sort of take on these deeper more uh, sort of shiny browns that you get and uh, most people associate with pyrography 
Hello, welcome back, Eddie. decide how to shed this looks rather flat faced. I think what I want to do is continue this up here somewhat. Okay. Oh, I see you don't like my music. Okay, fair enough, Wolfie. This is supposed to be epic music. Quite worked out if it's a compliment or not that you can watch this stream without without the sound on. I'm not sure whether that makes it good or bad. <laughs> bad enough to mute, but good enough muted. Yeah. Am I happy with that bare shading? Uh, partially. Now completely finished. I did notice the other night, uh, last night, that this around here looks really light. Yeah, you can sort of see like a a shape on there. It's not quite what I was intending.
Oh, I suppose so. Although this is textured, um, I can just go over the top, and uh, as long as I don't press down, then I, uh, I can avoid flattening this texture out, and I can sort of colour in between the dots. Now then, do I need a highlight on there before I finally colour that in? Because that's, at the moment, it's quite a neat sort of looking highlight, which I might leave. What does that look like? It's sort of... I uh, might leave that like that. It kind of does act, act like a highlight, which I quite like. So, we shall leave leave the highlight for the moment that in afterwards. Tell you what I also noticed is that eye is not round. So let's have a little bit more heat on this. I think it was round at one point but for some reason it no longer is. kind of a teardrop shape, it kind of still is. It's actually that little bit there, yeah, the, mm, I know what's wrong with it, but there isn't much I can do about it. I would end up making the eye too small, at least I have sort of rounded it off a little bit. So I've taken away the sort of really irregular shape.
So I'm just attempting to get some subtle tone in anti, just as a, this is a little bit of a sharp transition, even for a shadow, so. Still too white there, still too white there, but getting there. Cheeky cheekbone, perhaps something. in a position to start putting dots back on the face again. Of course, that front of the nose is much too white. Um, do I do anything about it now? Yeah, probably. It doesn't need much. Again, just knocking the white off. So that still looks white, but it's not as in your face white as it was before. Mm. 
Now, what I was doing was bringing this shading just a little bit closer to a bit further down on the face. I'm still not sure that's right. And this is just part of the um, thing of pyrography, well this style of pyrography is just to keep adjusting those shades. Um, if like me you're not um, as aware of exactly what shade they need to be immediately. But just to keep adjusting them until it starts to look right. And that's what I'm doing. Um, I think it still probably needs to be darker still. I think, it, I think just naturally you kind of... Uh, as the person doing this keep going it can't be that dark it is that dark. <laughs> uh, but you keep going it can't be that dark it doesn't look that dark but your eyes have got this amazing ability if you like to sort of compress the light so you know you you, you see darker things lighter and lighter things darker almost um, and so you sort of look at two things and don't necessarily see the real level but it doesn't look even though you're not seeing sort of a, um, a you know the, as dark as it should be if it's not that dark it doesn't look right so when you're trying to artificially create it as I'm doing here um, you have to keep going until it looks right and you sometimes that is different, you know, it's not it's not what's actually there and it's not necessarily what you see, but it is it does look right. So most of the time um yeah, make it make it look right. It will look better that way. But you do have to be sort of careful that you're not getting your own I for it being confused or, or surprised, subtle, um, misled.
emphasizing that center dip just slightly. May do it more, but for the moment, just slightly. Okay, so now having got that darker top edge, I now have to fade that forward. the moment that almost looks like a double exposure uh, coming along coming along um, I'm wondering whether I ought to put dots on at this point now or start to put some on because they're dark fairly obvious I guess and as I put them on it will make the area around it it'll do one of two things it'll either make the whole general area look darker which is one thing it will do um, or the other thing it will do is it will highlight contrast around it uh, which may make the fur look too light around the dots but when you stand back the whole thing looks darker because of the dots so it might be time to put some of those on we've got a general sort of face shape in there now uh, the dots, for example, help to emphasise the muzzle. Um, so it might be a good idea to put some on there and, and sort of the eye shapes a little bit. Because you can sort of intimate, intim, intimate? suggest um, 
curves by sort of shape of dots and things. So a dot, uh, so a dot when it's on its side, you know, stick a dot, hand shaped dot if you like, uh, turn it on its side, it looks thinner. So, you know, a dot that looks thinner than you're expecting tends to make your eye think it's on a sideways plane. That's why these down here sort of look like dots, but they look like they're on the side of the head because they're long and thin. As they become more dot shaped, you'll look, you'll see them as being more flat, like these. And then the curve itself suggests some, some body shapes. So, might be something for tomorrow. Put some of uh, the dots on. Won't be tonight because we're about to finish. But, uh, despite what it may look like, there's actually a lot of progress uh, being made on this. Pyrography isn't a fast craft. It does take many hours uh, to do. And the more detail, the more shading that you want, the longer it takes. And uh, then becomes a trade-off between the quality that you're after and how long you're prepared to, do, uh, to spend getting it. I mean, I could, for example, go in here and do all, even all the white hairs. I could, I'm not going to. I might hint at a few. I shall see. But um, uh, especially in certain areas. Um, but uh, I'm not going to do them all by any means. But I could uh, get to that level of detail. Uh, and that would be really hard to do. Which is one of the reasons why I'm not going to do it. But anyway, uh, we will carry on with this tomorrow. Yeah, I don't see why not. So a stream, next stream, tomorrow evening. Hopefully starting around about approximately 7pm UK time. That's GMT at the moment. And going on for about two hours. But if I'm late, I'll start as soon as I can. Sounds as usual. And we'll go on until about 9 o'clock. So keep an eye out on Twitter. Targonart.com as Aragonart, so twitter.com slash Aragonart, um, or here on uh, Twitch of course, you can uh, click the follow button and get um, whatever notifications uh, Twitch will give you, but I do tweet when I'm going live as well. So with that, I hope I will see you on the next stream. So until then, bye for now.